Welcome to a brand new episode of Back Pass X Ballistia Kalsa. And with me, I've got Joel Robert. No Kelvin Singh this week. Yep. He's break. on uh, community service. Yeah. That, that's right to say, Doing right? A lot of community service. Community service. service. Yeah. We're going to yeah, miss him. Is. He's uh, doing a lot of things right now. So he's been tied up, but he will be back. He will be back soon, probably next week or something. So don't miss him so much. So he just does. Yeah. But we have a replacement for him. Yeah. No, not really replacement. Before that, of course. They kind of look alike, though. Yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah, I think so. They kind of look alike. They stay in the same area as well. Yeah. And both get ends, starts, and win and win. No, not really. No. Something uh, like somewhat, somewhat, somewhat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyways, uh, nothing much to talk about in terms of games because no SPL games, international week again. No, nothing so, much to talk about. Yeah, it's just a uh, The only thing Singapore we can talk played. about is uh, it's, if there's a will, there is a way. We're going to keep it that way, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, we just got to be careful what we say yeah, nowadays. We just got to be careful with what we say because we really? never know when, when we, or what is going to happen that you might just get slapped in your face. So, yeah. So that's it's like a, that's a bit like uh, Oscar's kung fu kick. It's worse right? than that, bro. So don't, before you even say anything, always check with your guests what is there not to say. You know those sensitive parts. So take that away. You will have a great show. Yeah. Yeah, I think two people didn't do that. They end up in a brawl. So yeah. and here we are. No matter of brawl. So, anyways, introducing this week's guest. He's actually one of our. Uh, most ardent listeners of our show. Really? Yeah. And uh, he's a player that is a really good centre-back, I must say. I remember the last match, uh, he wasn't playing because he had, he was recovering from COVID. Mm. And uh, he was on the bench. So, someone was there with me. In fact, uh, PSB. Uh, Ramesh from PSB. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. he the one that was standing up, cheering, keep telling the guys, let's go, let's go, and all this? I, I believe so, yes. Yeah, he was yeah, sitting was... Nearby, uh, nearby us and he was telling, you know, they should bring him on. They should bring him on. Because at least he'll show up the defence, he'll shout at them and he'll organise things, get, get it all organised. They I, did bring I, I him on. Yeah, they, they did in a different position. But without further ado, let me introduce our guest today. It's none other than Mr. Delvin the Singh. What's How are you doing, Del? Delvin? Hi, guys. Firstly, thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor to be here. But yeah, it's uh, I've been okay, you know, with training and stuff, getting ready for the game. Uh, hope you guys had a good week so far. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad, we will say. <laughs> but it's always a pleasure to have you, man. Yeah. We've yeah. always the thing is we've wanted we've been wanting you since two like, weeks what? late, two weeks late, three weeks. Yeah, yeah two weeks, three late. weeks. Yeah. Right? yeah, two week, two to three weeks. We've been yeah. wanting you, and each time. We hit a hurdle, and the last one was that you you got into COVID, yeah. Co- yeah you got yeah. COVID, and then things got a little bit messed up for us. So yeah, so here we are, and we are so glad to have you, and can't wait to get started because this week is probably the best game ever to watch, yeah, and yeah. to play them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we are giving a lot too much away, Dell. What has been the team training about uh, this week ahead of the match against? LCS, Line City Sailors for short. Um, I think um, it's it's been well. I would say Coach Agba and the technical team has uh, actually really analyzed Line City, uh, really in depth. I would say you know tactically what they would do with without the ball, um, their strengths and etc. And you know I think everyone around the league knows that one of their biggest strength is in terms of um, in the likes of Kim Shingu, you know, mm. in the air, yeah. he's always, uh, he's definitely going to get the better of a lot of defenders in the league with his strength and power. But what I really liked this week in training was that Coach Akbar really emphasized a lot on other aspects of what Lion City are really capable of. You know, mm. I think why he was, he's been doing that is also because um, I think as of late, um, Kim Kim hasn't started much. They've always started with Amirudin or you know Song and stuff like that, and they bring a different a different ball game. I would say. Mm. So we've been we've been practicing and really working hard well to counter any issues that Lion City will um throw at probably, you. Yeah, throw at us or yeah. give us a hard time on Friday. Mm. But yeah, I would say we are we're definitely ready for it. Uh. Okay, that's good. But you talk about Kim Shin Wook's uh, height. I think next to you, there's a giant 
called Mr. Ensa Brunsevic. Yeah, definitely. You know, Ensa, we played them in a friendly the other time and uh, Ensa is, I think in terms of height difference, is probably only what, 0.2 centimeter or something of that sort of difference. But uh, yeah, in terms of the air, Ensa is going to have a, it's going to be a really good battle between these two, you know, <laughs> two of the tallest players in the league, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but um, apart from that, you know, I think with Kim Shin Wook, he's very experienced and smart. And he knows he definitely definitely knows how to tackle these kind of issue uh, issues when he has tall players around this and that. So I think that's the that's the role that the other players in the team has in terms of how we can really get him out of the game. I would say, but <laughs> then again, not him. We are not really focusing just on him. We are also focusing on the entire team, mm-hmm. right from if they start with Hassan or Izwan, right to the front of. Uh, the likes of Shin Wook or even Amiruddin and stuff. Yeah. Mm. All right. Interesting, man. You got anything else? Yeah. Is this the best time to play them? You know, they haven't really started well. Yeah. And three quarters of the squad are in nationals, but yet they did perform really well. Yeah. You really? Fatigue, it's in, definitely being played right now. Is it the best time to play them? Um, With them... No man, I don't think so. I don't think there's really a best time to play them. I would say, uh, you know, um, I think we have to look at them not only in terms of first eleven, but as a team as a whole. Mm-hmm. You know, right from the young players that they have, the quality that they have. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of Saifula, Norada, Anaki, and you know, right up to the biggest of the players. You know, yep. uh, in Diego, Max, and even local players like Shadan Harris, they have, um, they have. A really strong squad, both on and off the pitch. In terms of, uh, sorry, first eleven and on the bench. Mm. You know who anyone, any player can come in and do a rather similar, mm-hmm. put up a similar show mm. as them. So you know, I think with regards to that, I don't think it's really the best way. <laughs> and also, you know, yeah, they just had international games and everything. But um, I don't know. I always feel that you know, once players come back from international, they always look sharper. Mm. They always look mm. sharper. They always look uh, quicker, and that's probably because of uh, what in- international football is all about. Where I wouldn't say the league is much slower, but you know when you're especially when they played Malaysia just a few days yeah. ago, you know the mm. intensity and everything there. They're definitely going to bring it to the field as well. So they might be fatigue, but I'm pretty sure they'll get all ready. Probably the adrenaline up. is yet to dry off yet. Yeah. They'll, they've been emphasizing a lot of the their attack. Yeah. They don't really touch base on their defense much. On our side, I think our defense is something that uh, a little bit worry. Mm-hmm. Looking into this Friday's game, yeah. are you going into the game with uh, a little bit fear in you, or you're thinking after the probably two weeks break and training, we are all gunned up, ready to take him on? Like how confident are you guys? Yeah. Um, I mean. To be honest, individually, I think every single game that I've gone into, mm. four games as of now, every single game I've been confident and not fearful of anything. Mm. And likewise, my whole team, my teammates are as well. Everyone in Blaster itself is confident, you know, in going into every game. Mm. But yes, unfortunately, it happens in football where we're leaking goals and that's definitely a worrying factor as well. You know, mm-hmm. As much as we have the likes of our three Japanese who have been banging in goals yeah. you know, for fun you know, every single week, but if we don't do a proper job at the back as well, then you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's not going to win us games yeah, 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 and yeah. stuff like that. But I think uh, this has been an issue that um, everyone, every single member of the team um, right from the attack all the way to the defense is also really doing their part just to snap out these attacks. You know, mm. I, I know everyone is going to say it's just going to be the defense. It's the defense, you know, that is licking in the goals. But then again, defense. You, you know, defend as a team, yeah, right? You defend yeah. as a team. Yeah. So yeah. we've been working really hard in training as well mm. with regards to that. And you know, over time, <coughs> I'm pretty sure we'll get better. But um. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not a nice feeling, you know, to lick in six goals, five goals, week in, week out, you know, yeah. especially playing as a defender. Yeah. It's, uh, you can, okay, let's say, i give you an example that, let's say we win 6-5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, okay, as much as I'm happy with the win, but I'll still go back thinking about the five goals that yeah, we yeah, had, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, for me, it's 
it's always uh, right down to not even letting in a single goal mm-hmm. in the entire game. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's something that uh, we've been working really, really hard on. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm sure everyone is going to come up and do well. You know? yeah. 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 Okay. Hopefully, we can see the fruits of that labor on Friday. So, it's coming on Friday. Uh, yeah. At Jalan Besar Stadium, seven forty-five PM kickoff. Be there, guys. Be there. Did I get the time right? Eight thirty. No. No. Ramadan is not Saturday, right? Yet, so seven forty-five. Seven forty-five. Tomorrow, sailors up against the Tigers. Eh, not tomorrow, Friday. Friday, 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 Friday. Friday. Sailors up against the Tigers. All be there, guys. It could be. I don't know. I'm just. I'm not, not going to sound too cheesy, lah. But I think this could be the game of the season. It yeah. could be the game of the season. Looking at how the the, the boys out in in Palestine have been trading mm. and stuff, you know, I think we're in this. Level. Yeah, I think from uh, Delvin's words as well. I think the determination is there. Yeah, you can yeah, s- you, you can sound the can de- sense the fire. You in can him, sense like, the fire. The, the past determination. Past podcasts or past interviews. Yeah. We don't really sense fire much in him, but. In this, he is bringing up the yeah, fire. I don't know yeah. because of the aircon is too cold for yeah, him. He needs to <laughs> heat himself up. He yeah. needs to warm himself up. Yeah, but basically yeah. that's... And it's, uh, yeah, you can sense that determination in his words and the way he's spoken earlier. So I, I guess, you know, I think we are in for a treat. We're in for a treat. Yeah. Could be probably a 93rd minute tells thunderous hater from the corner. And then we sneaked in a one deal with. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> you never know, man. Never know. But yep. Well, how yeah. confident you are? You have answered that. We're gonna let you let loose a little bit. Yeah. You know, just gonna warm you up a little bit with a few rapid fire questions. All right, and then we'll just take you down through some memory lane of you know your childhood football and what so and whatnot. So first off, the rapid fire. Um, if there's one guest you can recommend to us, who would that be? And it has to be from Belastia. And why? Um, and why? I would say Ignatius. Iggy? Okay. Yeah. Why Iggy. though? I think, um, you know, coming back from football after a year out is never easy, especially at his age, mm-hmm. you know, 30 this year. Um, I I was with him in Tanjopaga and then, you know, he wasn't offered a contract and stuff like that. And um, it's, it's really hard to see him just go like that because honestly, I feel he's a really good player. Mm-hmm. He's been, you know, all this time... I think he's been under underrated mm. in the league. Um, he has a lot of qualities in him, and you know, maybe why I'm also I was hit by it as well when he wasn't offered a contract, be it at Tanjung or elsewhere. Was also I think we grew up together in the NFA system, okay. so we've been together all the way. Mm. So it's never nice, you know, seeing your teammates leave the game. Something yeah. that they've been working so hard <laughs> their entire life. So yeah. I think he's a story that everyone needs to hear. And know of the struggles he's gone through, oh, right. um, and you know how I feel that you know he he has what it takes to be in the national team, mm. Basically, mm. I really strongly feel maybe you know with time he's gonna only get better and better each game. Mm. And yeah, I think he's a guess I would recommend at the okay. next show. Mm. Ross, Talk, talking about that actually, do you? You listened to our previous episode with uh, your assistant coach Shai Azmi. That was quite motivational and inspirational yeah. as well. I mean, I mean, um, he he himself, you know, in the team, the role that I see he plays, you know, he is um, he can be both the discipline master, but as well as a motivator. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone, every technical staff, right from management down to technical member, you know, um, the be it the assistant coach or whoever it is I think everyone has been motivating and stuff like that you know it hasn't been easy our journey so far mm-hmm. it's been rather I would say um, interesting you know where as a spectator you will definitely be off your seats yeah, countless yeah, sure. number of times yeah, you know during yeah. the game but uh, as a neutral it's always a good game you mm-hmm. know with high scoring goals and this but yeah, with that said, again, you know, going back to Coach Sayasme, he's been he's been a influential figure in the team. You know, right. always bringing the guys up, be it a senior player or even a young player. And you know, when uh, discipline needs to be enforced in the team, he gets mm-hmm. it done as well, and not in a way that is very old school, like you know, just reprimand a person screaming. Yeah, you know, but he he does it very well. All and right. um, yeah, it's a it's a very it's a his role is just. I would say a very crucial role as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's good, man. man. I think Syed played a big part for us last week. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was a fun episode. Big deep on him. That was a fun episode. So, yeah, let's get Iggy 
probably in the next few weeks and then we will yeah. talk about his For story. Sure. Alright, yeah, the next sure. one. Toughest opener you ever faced? The toughest. Uh, Yunis Mahmoud. I've ever mentioned this. He was uh, when we played uh, Singapore played Iraq in the World Cup qualifier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, the captain, oh, right? The captain, the captain of he was, yeah, uh, the Asian legendary Asian. captain. Yeah, he yeah. won the Asian Cup with Iraq. Yeah. Difficult, though. Ah, uh, difficult man. He he isn't as big as a normal striker is, uh-huh. but he is really powerful and strong. You know, fast and fast. Yeah. So he was, <laughs> that's the part where he hits a lot. <laughs> Your best defensive partner. Best defensive partner I've had. Mm, whoa, I I can't really single out mm-hmm. anyone because be I think I've had really good partners, be it local or uh, foreign, foreign foreign players foreign, right. as well. So yeah, I think every partner is uh, has taught me a different kind of game, mm-hmm. and you know brought my game also to another level. But if so we just got a single out one. Single out one. Or you can name more than one. Yeah. Um I mean I really love the partnership I had at Tanjapaga with Farid and Shakir. That was good. Yeah. yeah. I think uh I would say in terms of mindset, mentality, a bit of the I don't know, no nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's something yeah, that yeah. I really liked last year. Mm. You know, always having Especially, especially Shaki, you know, having my back always, and it was nice to reunite with him. Mm-hmm. And again, he was my NFA teammate as well back then. Mm, yeah. So yeah, I think single out, I'll probably say Shaki lah. Okay, that's okay. a good one. All right, the next two is going to be interesting. Um, who do you think? I think you've answered this before. <laughs> who do you think the next big thing for Singapore football? Yeah, I remember saying Kyrene before. Um. And Joel Chu as well. Mm, oh, yeah, that boy. I said, I feel that you know Joel is a very interesting player. I think I, people with the name Joel is it's just interesting. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joel, man. <laughs> that we didn't know. <laughs> I think yeah, if um, I would really, yeah, I would I would say Joel is a very creative player, very um, smart player, <laughs> and you know, like Iggy, I think he's really underrated as well. You know, yeah, and very. one more guy I would say is Ong Yuen, I think. You know, in, in Tampanese this mm. year as well. Yeah, yeah. A young figure, you know. I think they are really interesting and very good players, you know. All so, right. I would I would go with this too, man. Sweet. Singapore football, if you're hearing this, this is two big names that we really, really need to tap on. All right, then, let's bring you down to memory lane. I think you were saying uh, in terms of... Uh, an influential figure, right? Uh, in in Ballester, it could be like Coach Syed, or it could be Coach Agba, or it could be uh, Darwin. Darwin as well. No, these are people that you have a lot of influential, but is in uh, probably in the club itself. Yeah. But we're gonna talk back a little bit of your family because I think growing up, uh, your parents have really made a huge impact, and it's not easy coming from your kind of childhood. It's really really difficult for the man you are right now. It's it's ama- I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. I was amazed while reading a story, while digging up things about you to ask you questions. He's our research man. Yeah, and, and I was I was really thrown back. I was like, wow. He's like, that kind of a, of a background and and now he is one of the best centre-backs in, in Singapore football, I would say. Yeah, so talk us through uh, the kind of impact that both your parents have done up for yourself. Um, I think... Um... Yeah, like you mentioned, you know, growing up was a bit tough uh, with my family. I wouldn't say the environment. The environment was good. But I would just say the struggles that both my parents went through. Mm. Um, I think if you guys heard on the final whistle, I opened up quite a bit on it. Um, yeah, my dad used to used to be a drug addict back then. And, mm-hmm. you know, he was... Uh, he was he faced his consequences, you know, by Singapore law and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But you know, I think how he got out of it was is definitely uh something that I will always look upon. Mm-hmm. You know, coming out from you I mean in society these days, you know, especially in Singapore set to say, you know, when a person is uh prosecuted, like, you know, when they go into jail and stuff like that, when they're out, you know, the record holds Forever. Holds them, you know, yeah. forever, and, you stigma, know, as man. much as as much as you know, they say like, oh, um, yellow ribbon and, and all stuff, that. But yeah. you know, every every it does haunt you in a way or not, in a way or two. 
so yeah, I think the way that my dad has gotten out of the entire situation and um, he's he's been, yeah, you know, just a very influential figure in the entire family. Um, how he supported um, my brothers as well, my older brother and my younger brother. You know, how he got out of that, of that situation of being a druggie and then, you know, uh, changing his life entirely. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I'm really proud of what he's doing because he took he took this opportunity to actually use what he relied on to actually help people get out of it as well. You know, mm-hmm. he's currently okay. a yeah drug rehabilitation counselor mm. oh, uh, wow. with IMH. Yeah, so okay. he's he's been there previously. He was in a, a halfway house mm-hmm. um, called the Helping Hand. Oh yeah, yeah. and. Uh... Yeah, in Akos Rangun. Yeah, Akos yeah. Rangun, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, when he got out of prison, you know, DRC, he was there as an inmate, as, I wouldn't say an inmate, but, you know, a recovering addict. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, by God's grace, uh, that was the best place for him to be at. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, everything worked out well. He went on finishing the program, the one-year program. Then he went on to actually um, be a working staff and slowly climb up the ladder there, you know. And at the same time, I think, when he speaks to me about everything, I can just see the fire in him in wanting to help people like him su- suffering from these issues, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's something that I really look look upon him, you know, the willingness to help others mm-hmm. when in when in need, you know, um, always lending a hand and whatever it is, and you know, the determination to go through that, like you mentioned, the stigma yeah. that yeah. society has, you know, it's it's tough, you know. It's yeah, yeah, easier yeah. said than done. Correct, but start going through the yeah. entire thing. So with him going through the entire thing, he's really, you know, he's really a hero to me, lah. Basically, mm. but that then again also, a lot of credit has to go to my mom as well, you yeah. know, for holding the fort when my dad was in prison and stuff. You know, back then it was just me and my younger brother. Uh, hey, me and my older brother. Sorry, my younger brother wasn't around. Yeah, <laughs> but I think um it was more towards you know. Um, salary wise, there was only one income coming in, which was my mom's, and it was about what eight hundred per month. Mm-hmm. And, you know, raising two kids, having a house, this and that. You know, it's mm. never gonna be easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she fought through the entire time, mm. and I can, you know, proudly say that, you know, she was the one who actually also got my dad, uh, off this habit. Mm. You know, wow. to really. To really steer him in the right direction, you know, really a superwoman to the entire family, you know, for all of us, and yeah, you know, for her, it's more towards how I would, how, how I look up to her is more towards, in a sense that you know, in whatever difficult situation, there is always a way out, you know, and whatever happens, always know that there is a way out. Mm. Everything works out well, <coughs> so yeah. Yeah, both of them are incredible. You know? Sweet, man. Yeah, like Dale said, that's, if there's a way, that's really there nice is a way. Really. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but yeah, man, Dale, it's so that's nice really to hear you, mean, you know, talk yeah, about your, you your, gotta, your mom and dad. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, so I got to say as well, you know, Dale, I'm not sure if you uh, you were aware about this, but during our first merch giveaway, yeah. unknowingly, your father was one of the contestants as well. And, yep. and very nice guy. So after, after the game, uh, I, while I was waiting for my grab, I, I met him and then we spoke a bit in Punjabi and you know so like a really nice guy you know I and what you just spoke I think again another inspirational uh, yeah. give takeaway right from it's, this it's uh, a takeaway for all the young lads in Belaste or even yeah, any yeah, adult, anyone or listening in aspiring to yeah. be a footballer whatsoever you can have whatever it takes to be a footballer but to have that kind of childhood and to come back in and to play and to represent your country and to keep still playing yeah. I think that's that's phenomenal. So if he if he can do it, you can do it too. Yeah, yeah. not me, but uh, right now we not, can't do that. Me. I have like a shitload <laughs> of uh, weight to lose right now. But then, if that's a will, that's always a way for Is me that going to be it. a tagline today? <laughs> I think that's going to be a tagline for the rest of the week, man. I think we have to use it. We have to jump on the bandwagon because I think this is something that's really really interesting. But Dell, you know, as a young player, let's just say as an eighteen year old, right? Eighteen year old is just difficult when you're going to like overcome depression, overcome friends, influence, smoking, drinking. 
But you had to overcome worse than this before touching that rust. As an 18 year old, 17 year old, have you ever gotten yourself injured? Broken head, dislocated shoulder, whatsoever? Not yet. Not yet. If you ever had it, let's just say you broke your knee. Lah. You broke your knee. Mm. Would you ever come back to play football again? Okay, so fun fact about me is that I got injured not too old after 18 years old. So okay. pro- perhaps about early 20s, 20, 21. All right. And it's an injury that still bugs me till today. See, and it still bugs you, right? Yeah, because I, I haven't recovered from it at all. I've developed arthritis and oh. it's... I got a nerve injury. Oh my. So it's not even ACL, cartilage, MCL and all. And until today, I'm still doing rehab. So Bro. that's my story. You need to get the doctor. That's my story. That actually nurse that with. <laughs> because he, at an 18 year old, alright, he got like what? Stress fracture on your fifth metatarsal? Yeah, the f- Bro, injury made famous by the Beckham. The word metatarsal, the only thing I know was the injuries to Beckham and Rooney. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I knew what metatarsal was. Yeah. And when I was to see you getting it, and I was like, oh no. He also said, got it. Yeah, he got it. It's in, in an 18 year old. Glamorous where, injury. Glamorous injury. <laughs> and that is where, you know, he's like picking up the pace to have a professional contract coming in, a professional career. You just ended your NFA yeah. or is your, on, on the journey there, you know, ending mm. it and it's going to go on to either Prime League or uh, then what's called S League. And then, boom, he got this. And it's not just six, eight months, guys. Listen to the story, bro. Tell it. Yeah, I was uh, I was in uh, NFA back then, NFA then, and it was still early on in the season, probably April. And yeah, you know, it was a stress fracture that I didn't know. I mm. never felt any pay, pain prior to that. It was just a simple land and boom, it gave way. Oh, know, so you I, mean like while playing, no, no, you did was, not feel it? No, the funny thing was it wasn't even during a football game or a training. It was actually demo. in a PE class. <laughs> oh, PE no, class, PE yeah. class. That's so, physical so, education. It's been yeah. long since I heard that word. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, we were playing handball, if I'm not wrong. So I just jumped and landed and next thing I just felt like it was this very irritating pain at, mm-hmm. you know, the metatarsal area and, you know, I just thought like, ah, it's just one of those knocks where it's going to go off after five minutes and I actually, you know, during that period, I actually just tried kicking a ball as well, you know, and I was like, why is this pain not going away? So I tried kicking harder to oh. think that it will go away. You know? Usually that's what we do, yeah. Yeah, because I think it happens, you know, when during injuries, you just try to do something and it goes away magically. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but it didn't go away and everything and I went for, I was, I immediately went to the E&E to have it checked out and uh, unfortunately, yeah, it was a, uh, stress fracture on my fifth metatarsal and I had to undergo surgery and yeah like you mentioned I think it was a very 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 crucial uh, period of time period yeah mm-hmm. because it was a transition of usually after NFAs the guys will go to Young Lions yeah. it's uh, it's yeah I wouldn't say it's a more directed path than others but it's always that is always the known path la, mm-hmm. for NFA players Um, but then you know, knowing that I'll be out until that next year, not yeah. playing any games, not knowing if the coach would have seen me and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I the next best path I could take was Prime League. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but then again, you know, with the injury, coming back was really tough and stuff like that. So, I think I was on the brink of actually just stopping for good, lah, mm. basically, you know. But, but then came an unexpected call. You know, from Mr. Terry himself. Yes, Coach <laughs> Terry. You know, he, he shout out to Mr. Terry, bro. <laughs> yes, you know he's yeah he was my savior back then. You know, mm-hmm. he he is still my you know I always regard him highly as a coach and as a person himself, mm-hmm. and definitely as a legend in the game as well. You mm-hmm. know, so I think uh, back then he gave me a call out of the blue and he said like, "Dell, I understand you are going through rehab now. You know, in FS and stuff and." Uh, we are expected to only return probably next year, February. Mm-hmm. So, uh, February, March, you know. Um, so, I'm just here telling you that, okay, I heard you're not going to get into the Young Lions, which was kind of expected lah, for me at then because I wasn't playing. But um, but then after that, I he just said that there's a new club coming up, Tanjung Paga, you know, we're going to get younger boys and I'm going to be the coach and stuff. So, I didn't really know what he was getting at. Mm-hmm. Then the question came would you like to join the team? 
Wow. And I was like, uh, yeah, coach, I can, you know, definitely, you know, it's a, but is it a prime day, S league, what is it? He said, no, no, that it's a direct, like, S league thing. So I said, okay, definitely, you know, just let me get back my fitness and I'll go for trials and everything. And he's like, uh, no, there isn't a need because it's, uh, I've seen you before <laughs> doing oh. other thing once and, no, this is like an express route, huh? It's like USS, you had that express route. It's like you can yeah. straight hit the queue in. You just got that route in, bro. <laughs> yeah, so wow. I, think, I think because you've seen me before that, like prior to that, when under 21 or like, you know, training with the Young Lions and stuff because he was a Young Lions coach himself. So he saw me and he was like, you know, uh, I don't see a need for you to go for a trial because I've seen you enough. Mm. And um, I'm just waiting for you to get back from your injury. And yeah, we're just going to sign you. So, I don't know what I did in my past life to <laughs> earn this, you know. But, yeah, I was really, that has been a life-changing moment as well, you know, for getting me now 12 years down the road. Yeah, I am, you know, still wow. playing. And speaking with us, I think this is yeah. something that's interesting. Eh? Like I said, in USS, there's two queues. One is yeah. the normal and the other is the express. You need to get the express on a Saturday or Sunday yeah. to get ahead of the line or yeah. you can yeah. and that's why they've got it you're stuck at the end of the no line trials line. no practices sir, nursing an injury and yet boom yeah that shows his reputation as a player you don't need to attend anything we just got you yeah. you just got to play it just shows, shows the, the caliber time. yes the caliber that Dad yeah. has been so I'm just going to ask you that that's a saying right no coach Terry no Del Winter that is for sure all right, but is there any other characters that has made the similar impact as Coach Terry? I think you know there are many coaches actually. There are you know many every single coach that has come uh, that I've been on board with, you know, be it a short, short term playing playing term or be it a long one like you know like Coach Terry himself. But I think everyone has impacted me in one way or another. Mm. Um, prior, before Coach Terry was my teachers in my secondary school. Which you school know, was that? I was in Singkang Secondary. Okay, oh, okay. Wow. Oh, that's so a footballing got... school. Yeah. No, I thought it's a hockey school. I was. It was. It yeah, was. It was, both, it was, huh? it was hockey sure then, but I ah, remember the reason we came. Yeah, football yeah. as well. And uh, you know, I had teachers then, uh, Mr. Raj, Mr. Donald, and Coach Tony. You know, they they also impacted me, <laughs> impacted my life in a lot of ways. Even up to now, even though I've just been working with. Uh, Coach Akbar for just what for now is March, so it's just five months five since months, November. Yeah. You know, I started. Yeah, he has impacted me in a lot of ways. I would say, you know, five months people might be thinking you must be joking there, but seriously, you know, with Coach Akbar, he he is really, you know, full of ideas. Mm-hmm. Always, always, uh, on the ball. You know, even sometimes when we go for dinners, I uh, 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 sorry, breakfast after training. You know, like. Coaches will go there. It's okay. I think Dennis is fine as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and players go themselves and we all end up at the same place. Like, you can mm-hmm. always see Coach Akbar is always talking about football and, you know, always thinking of what's next, what's mm-hmm. the best for the team and this and that. And, yeah, I think a lot of coaches along the way, just, you know, I've I've had many very, very good coaches. You know, mm-hmm. Coach right. Philip, uh, the late Coach Sadi Moin as uh, well, you know. So, yeah. there are many, too many to mention, to be honest. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting, man. Yeah, where do you guys go for breakfast, though? Yeah, that's the question I'm gonna ask. <laughs> yeah. So you know, fans can stalk you. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to get any autograph, or any picture, or photo up or something, Ballester players and coaches. Any Ballester players and coaching staff. Yeah. Tell where is the breakfast venue? Um, tell me, man. We tell don't us. Have, we don't have a specific spot, lah. Basically, we just. Oh yeah, I think uh, <laughs> we all just you know wherever the crowd feel like it's going, then we just. End I up can give a call to Darwin now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Please and some of the members as well you know, with the coaches and stuff. Yeah, so I think, but with regards to breakfast, your next, uh, your next, uh, who is this guest on the show? Iggy. Please ask him. He's the one always we initiating always, yeah. this. Oh wow! But okay. yeah, you get a stick from us as well. You're like, hey, this is not good, lah. Like, what the food is not nice. Don't say, I, you know, I don't have to talk. Yeah, ask Iggy. Ask Iggy All right. the man. The fruit critic in there is there. Yeah, before yeah. we're gonna close the curtain on your memory lane, I just wanna ask this last one. I think what are the changes you have seen yourself as a player? From the time you started in Young Lions and till this day for Ballester. Mm. Tanjung Paga, you mean? Yeah, my first. My first oh, club. sorry, yeah. Tanjung Paga. All right. Uh, Research man. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tanjung Paga. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You had the express route, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. my bad, my bad. Yeah. I would, 
go with maturity mm. over the years, you know. Um, and definitely playing wise, you know, became, I wouldn't say became better of or what sort, but I think I became more, I don't know if it's a, if it's the right word to use smarter mm-hmm. in getting yeah, play definitely. done, you know. Wiser, uh, wiser. Probably, yeah, wiser, yeah. Probably mm-hmm. wiser is the best word to use. I think, you know, when you're young, you're always very naive and, mm-hmm. you know, going into challenges or, rash. you know, yeah, rashly or even when during a game play, you always, you think but you don't really care about the consequences. Yeah, but yeah. whereas now when you're older, with, you know, with the number of years playing and, you know, advices from everyone, especially from senior players as mm-hmm. well and coaches, you know, mm-hmm. you become more mature, I would say. And it also, yeah, made me more mature off the field as well. Mm. You know, both of it. And now you're one of the senior players as well. Yeah, yeah. sadly I'm the oldest player in the team. Uh. I would never think 30 <laughs> being the oldest, but yeah, sadly I am. You're 30? 30, 30, 30, 30, wow. Yeah. Doesn't, look like, <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Not yet, alright. That means his birthday is coming up soon, so get that gifts ready, fellas, alright? Joel, how old are you? Uh, 31. Yet to be 32 this year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Alright, alright. So now it's my turn to do the fire, quick fire, fire, yep. fire, quick fire. Um, a bit on football, a bit on your personal life. So here we go. First, first question I already know from the moment you walked in, but I'm still gonna ask you. <laughs> Favorite club? Liverpool. Oh, I walk alone. <laughs> we need to support Liverpool right now, okay? Why? The boss is hitting the Liverpool academy, uh, so yes. I walk alone. Right. I can keep things separate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite all time player? Steven Gerrard. Mm-hmm. You don't need to ask that. <laughs> you knew that. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised. Last week, Said Azmi, oh, Liverpool yeah. fan, David, David Beckham. Beckham. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Married or single? Or single, single ready to mingle? Single. Not no, ready we, to no, mingle? We gave you three choices. So you need to answer the either one of it. You need to hear that third choice. Yeah, you have to hear the third choice. Third choice is very important. No, just single. Just single <laughs> means God last. It's, it's focused uh... on the football. It's focused on football, fellas. <laughs> okay. Favorite Pangra artist or song? Um, I think not a lot of people know this, but I actually don't really know Punjabi. I oh, don't okay. speak it. Yeah, okay. I took Malay in school. Ah, uh, me, oh, so, me too. Wow. Me yeah, too. So it's more towards <laughs> just my grandparents at home just teaching, but. I don't know how to read or write. Yeah, write, same, yeah. same with me. So, but I don't, I don't, I don't really you listen. Don't listen. So, again. favorite music? What, what um, kind of music like? Genre of good is just uh, you know, hip hop, R and B stuff like that. Mm-hmm. No, That's nothing cool. specific. But what is just you know whatever I like at that in, in that current mood, then I'll just listen Sweet. to it. Yeah. Any favorites you got? Yeah, hip hop. No, no, no favorite. No yeah. favorite like the old school ones. Something that stands out. I like mean, Pop, Snoop, Dre. You name it, you have it. Oh, all of yeah, it, huh? All of it. That's yeah. the thing. I can't choose as well. Okay. What do you like watching? What do you like watching? Movies or series? Um. Well, a good series. Uh. Okay, you like it drawn out? Yeah. It's always uh, very interesting. You know, every single day you're like, okay, when is the time to watch it? You know, do I have yeah. a, a spare time to watch it? You know, but then again, mm-hmm. also... It, there's a con of it when you don't get to watch it, you're like, ah, shit, when, 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 you know. Like, <laughs> the cliffhanger, the cliffhanger, right? Yeah. Movies, yeah, it's it's really nice, you know, within that one, one and a half hours, two yeah. hours, mm-hmm. but after that, it's like, oh, it's done now. Yeah. What next? Uh, yeah. Okay. True. So what kind of series you like? Um, yeah, name I, a few, man. I think yeah. it's getting a little bit dried up, man. I, you don't have much shows to watch. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm really on a, like, a specific kind of series, but I watch many things like, I don't know. I'm. I like, com. I wouldn't say comedy, but it's like, yeah, you know, something like family comedy kind of thing, ah. or you know, something drug related, like oh. you know, those kind of uh, <coughs> mafia kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, cool, yeah, right, 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 right. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Now the next question is a really interesting one. <laughs> Your, oh my God, it's you know, you know that right? Yeah. <laughs> Favorite food in the Godwara. So, for those who are listening in, Godwara means the Sikh temple. And whenever you go to a Sikh temple, anywhere in the world, you will serve food. Regardless of race or religion, you can just, you know, cover your head, walk in, have a free meal. And it's all vegetarian, so you don't need to worry about halal or non-halal. No meat served at all. 
So yes, your favorite food in the Gurdwara. Yeah, but still, you know, that one food normally you go and you wish they had. Always wish you they I had. I think it. it's the... Say it. Uh, Come on. It's the very common one, like dal and roti. I dal and roti. It. Yeah, I think it's a very... It's like chicken rice to, sambal. to everyone. Yeah, yeah that is right. It's uh, you can never go wrong with it, lah. Yes. Okay, so da roti would mean chapati in this sense. He didn't say, he didn't say tau sambal. We <laughs> were we were thinking you gonna say that. That was he back then. That. that was the hottest during my time, man. Like Fridays, we just hit there. We ain't got uh, more. Yeah. We ain't got no money during secondary school days or primary school. Yeah. No money. Fridays best time. Hit that place tau sambal with dal and a little bit of rice. Repent from your sins and then you do the sin later on a bit. But yeah, hey, hey, shout out to all the, the Sikh temples, man. You guys have been really great for people like me, especially for all of us, you know, giving us food. But yeah, how much are they still doing that right now, Raj? I, in Singapore, not every temple, I would say, they do that. I, I think it depends on whether you have function going on in the temple or yeah. not. Uh, it's not not what it used to be or what it should true, be. True, but uh, I yeah. think the preparation is a bit difficult. I think it's difficult in terms of temple. You no, know, there's a huge load of things, which is why we're gonna ask your preparation. Yeah, the next question. Yeah, things, yep. very nicely set up for me. That's my right? forte. For me, it's, <laughs> all I gotta do now is step it in. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, Dell, I gotta ask you this question. I've been noticing a few things. Um, pre-game, at halftime, and after the game. You're always alone doing stretches. And uh, first of all, what are these stretches for? I think um, I've, over time I've understood my body that, um, you know, I take a while to get warmed up. Not as, uh, whereas some players, you know, can just simply walk into a field yeah. and play, but I can't really do that. And I realize that I always get injured while doing that, you know. Maybe my, I might sustain for a month or so and then after that injuries will start coming in. Mm. So yeah, that's why I'm always a bit strict on these stretches that I always need to do before I go in for the main uh, warm-up stretches, you know. Yeah. Okay, so do you start doing this after you got injured or were you always doing this from the start of your career? I uh, know I wasn't, you know, like a young boy. You, 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 you know, like, like you this know. kind of things. You know, it's just going. I just want to play. That's it. You know? but I think uh, over time, I started back when I was. Um, I remember Coach Philip talking to me about this when I was in Haugang, and he was like, "You really, really, really need to warm up before." And I kind of got the hang of it from then, and I've been doing it ever since. Uh. Mm. yeah. Okay, so like you're just stretching your hamstrings, your quadriceps and all yeah, that. It's yeah, it's more towards uh, activation, I would say. Mm. You know, it's just uh, firing your muscles up. It's not It's not definitely not uh, warmed up for a game, but at least it's warmed up enough for a proper main team, mm. um, you know, warm up. Yeah. Okay, so what kind of conditioning do you do so that you reach match day in an optimal condition? Um, I think for myself is um, I've been working with a personal trainer for the past uh, past one year. Yeah, I would say one year plus. Mm. Uh, he's currently a trainer with us as well. You know, um, Rory Winters. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he's uh, age of the box. Um, yeah. if you guys have seen, yeah. I think on Instagram he's yeah circulating quite a bit. So yeah, uh, he we actually uh cross path to a mutual friend of ours who okay. was a very close friend of mine who was my NFA teammate, you know. She okay. was a personal trainer with him at UFIT. Okay. And then uh, Rory just reached out and said, you know, how about, do you want to give it a session and see how it goes? And, you know, that first session when I went, I was like, no, this is something that I really want to. And mm -hmm. I think um, individually I've seen differences in, you know, uh, physicality and strength yeah. and stuff like that you know um even in terms of uh what weight percentage and stuff you know mm. simply by doing this um yeah i've seen the difference and i was really happy with the results and i think over time i stuck to this plan you know i at least have minimum two sessions per week before a game mm. but nicely timed out so that i okay. don't uh, really get overload too tired yourself. yeah overload myself before but um, if I'm really tired for the week, 
then I might just do it once. But that's how yeah, I usually prepare for a for a game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Norm- normally, what do you do? Like, is it static exercises or agility, mobility? Uh, what kind of exercises do you do? I think Rory has uh Rory has planned out it uh, planned it out very well. So mm-hmm. usually during preseason, it's more towards strength, not just getting the my uh the muscles fired up, mm. getting the mass in it and mm. stuff like that. And over time it transits to a um more towards power, endurance, mm. stuff like that, mm. you know, explosiveness. Mm-hmm. So it's just a uh, different kind of phases during different periods of the year. You know, when there's a break then maybe okay we can load up a bit more to fire those muscles up in terms of strength. But when it's you know game week uh weekly, that's more towards explosiveness and um yeah, explosiveness, you know, just getting a player faster okay, yeah, okay. with and without the ball. Okay. So that's, yeah, how, it, how it's been planned out. Okay, cool. Now, you talk about conditioning. Yeah. The next thing is be your intake, right? Yeah. Your diet, your what you drink, what you that's eat. Very, 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 very important, very, very crucial. Yeah. Share with us what, what do you do for your diet. Like, um, uh, what do you eat? No, not same really, like, for, like, being day before the game. No, 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 no. I, 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 I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not someone who is really crazy about diet. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, I've read up stuff, same like before I started with conditioning stuff, I've always been reading up and knowing what is it, what I'm, what I'm getting myself into. Mm. And I understand that diet really plays a very big part, mm. of which I totally agree. Mm. But I think with diet as well, um, it varies between different person. Like, mm-hmm. I might be okay with um, a high-protein kind of meal, yeah, whereas right. another person might not be, you yeah. know. some pe- I have teammates, you know, where I've seen over the years, they can simply just, before a game, have McDonald's. And oh. they play well, really well. For real? Yeah. So, McDonald's. And and that's the thing, you know, Man, that's the wow. thing. I, I don't know, maybe they're just, you know, they're lucky <laughs> in that sense. And I don't see them putting on weight and they are always so lean and everything, yeah, you know. Yeah. But then again, yeah, so I think it really varies. But for myself, is I'm not really strict on it. Mm. But I think I'm more stricter on it when it comes to few days before game. Mm. I think I would be a bit more, like I would ease off on it probably after a game. Mm-hmm. You know, where I just, uh, anything and everything. Yeah, yeah, you just you know need the Yeah, I just what I need to get in, I just get in. Mm. Even junk food, this and that, I just get in. Um, yeah, usually my after game meal is what McDonald's mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'll just eat oh, it. Okay. Um, because I feel that I also have to give my body what it needs yeah, for yeah. it to be happy, for True. it to, yeah. to reward me. yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know? okay, okay. So that that is something I believe in. Mm. You know, like I said, it varies for everyone. Mm-hmm. Some might not agree with it. Some mm. might. So, but towards um days before game I'm very strict with it. Yeah, so yeah. what do you eat then on those days? Usually it's more towards, you know, um a lot of uh, loading up of carbs, you know, for so and like rice and stuff, you know, and rice, um then vegetables, your meat, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Pasta, but, you know? Um yeah, pasta yes, but I'm more towards a rice person. Yeah, but I don't rice. mind pasta, you know, from time to time. But mm-hmm. I think I get more Full with rice. Mm. Yeah, pasta, so, I tend to eat a lot more okay. other things. So, rice, uh, vegetables, and protein. Yes. Mm. But one thing uh, I've been uh, I've been having over the years, which I really can't stay off, is coke. La. Usually, <laughs> oh, so it's man. a very common thing. Yeah, it's... Uh, I know, you know, a lot of people say coke zero. Uh, it's, not, it's not zero sugar. It's still coke at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, I think, but for me, it's just... That's just something I... I have it every single meal. The <laughs> fun fact, man, coke actually can be used to de a lot of uh, material. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, yeah. if you want to come out of yeah. it, <laughs> I don't want to de anything, my body, no. hey, But a little bit, shout out to McDonald's Singapore. If you're going to be watching this podcast Spot live time. tomorrow, okay, oh shit, I couldn't really say that. Yeah, you better cut that out. <laughs> I'll say that again. McDonald's Singapore, if you're watching this, all right, you're going to be sponsoring Delvinda. <laughs> With his meal after Friday, because this boy is gonna turn out probably in his best game of the season. What's the so, nearest McDonald's to Jalan Besar Stadium? What's the nearest McDonald's? I'm not too sure what's the nearest yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, so, Levin and Mati. He's got it picked out. He knows it. He knows the place. He knows the what meal do you have usually have? 
Double make spicy? Make spicy with cheese, yeah. Make spicy with cheese. So if you're hearing this, send it down to Jalambasa Stadium right after the 90th minute once the ref blows the whistle. <laughs> Give this man what he wants, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Nice, nice. So, like, in, in terms of drinks, anything you avoid? Uh, okay, you spoke about Coke, but... Yeah, I think... I think Coke is probably one of the worst of all. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have really much to... Um, but I have a sweet tooth, so ah. I will usually crave something sweet. Normal, be it, like, yeah, be it, like, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. Punjabi, Punjabi yeah. fellas are always yeah. for real. Sweet That's really like, like Coke is like the international uh water for mixtures, no? Yeah, uh, if you guys know I, what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yeah, we mean more towards meal is always with Coke. Uh, okay, game oh, for real? Do you mean you eat meals with Coke? I thought you just drink it like on your like, uh, apart, off days or apart. something. No, no, with meals. Like, I have it. But okay, on game days or the night before, I always, uh, I, yeah, I might have a glass of Coke, but it's more towards like 100 plus. Isotonic, uh, like, really isotonic. get okay, yeah, okay, okay. But uh, that's something which I will try to avoid. But after a game, it's, you know, full on, full on with it. All right, but, man. Um, I think, yeah, sweet something tooth. S- sweet tooth is, I don't know, maybe just walking past a bubble tea shop, something of like that, or, you know, Jalebi. Like an Oreo's no, cheese. Uh, it's too sweet. Like, <laughs> okay. It's too sweet, <laughs> right? Jalebi. I'm a, I'm a chocolate person. Oh, but an Oreo oh, yeah, cheese Same, same. I'm a chocolate oh, like person. lava cake. Yeah, lava. Oh, yeah, that's oh, something wow. I can never... I think I, you get it one here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's something that I always go for as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice, nice. Bro. Um... Hearing him say Swift to... I'm craving for lava cake <laughs> now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there used to be Chili's restaurant here. Ah, in yeah, Singapore. Chilis, yeah. yeah, and they had the best lava cake. For real? Yeah, yeah. But they I, don't, they don't now they have chilis. Now Chili's closed down in oh, Singapore, man. so I, I really missed it big time. When I went back to Malaysia, ah, <laughs> I found it. Hey, you can I found it and I Malaysia got it. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not so soon, but yeah, in the plans. Interesting, man. Look, I'm still thinking of lava cake at the moment, though. <laughs> I'm literally thinking of lava cake, so I'm going to take a little bit off. Uh, Dale, I think we're going to wrap this up in a little bit but just the last one just, we want to just ask you this uh, I think due to the association with uh, Kalsa you know right with the Sikh community yeah. as well and you being a Sikh yourself uh, what would you want to say to encourage more Sikhs to become professional footballers yeah I think um, you know as of now uh, it's only me and uh, probably Nikki Melvin Oh, yeah, just two, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Elbrex. Ah, right. yeah. So it's only two of us. Um, and over the years, it's always been only me alone. And you know, I've yeah. I've fa- famously, we had uh, Shabagat Singh and ah yes, the, Santok Singh in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. those were the big two. Yeah, definitely. No I think that was bigger than that. <laughs> On to become bigger yeah, than well, that. Well, 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 <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I think it's been it's been. It's been, you know, on this topic for quite a while, the yeah. past couple of years. Not only with Punjabis, but I think with the Chinese and the Indians. But yes, with Punjabis, I've seen, you know, a lot of good players, players with a lot of potential. You know, players. Uh, I have an older brother who is close to, you know, a lot of his friends who previously played as well. But a lot of them, you know, stop once they are done with prime link and stuff like that, and they don't continue. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm not too sure, but. You know, that's something that I just want to tell the players that, you know, I think there's a lot of talents out there. Mm. And, you know, I understand it's probably because of maybe, you know, for some it's stability, you know, some is this. But, you know, for me, I've always gone with this mantra, you know, that um, that if you really love something, just go for it. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, just go for it. Because just don't, at the end of the day, when you can't do it again, don't regret Right, you know, whatever it is, just just go with it. So this is my message. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you really want to be a player, go for it. Whatever it takes to do it, do it. And you know when, let's say, at the end of the day, it doesn't happen. It doesn't materialize. You know, you don't need to look back in regret. Oh, it's always it's words, always yeah. that it's always that. Oh, I've tried it, but it didn't work out. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, so be it. It happens in life. Yeah. I think it's more towards that, yeah, whatever it is, just do it. Mm. Oh, man. Nice words, Mandel. So, young boys, young girls out there watching, if you really yearn to play football and want to become professional, just go and give it a try. 
or just give Dell a call and tell him, Dell, I want to try play football for professional, you know, like, would you hook me up with something? So, yeah, so go yeah. for it. And, uh, yeah, that's what Dell said. Yeah. At least if you have went through it and it didn't work out back then, 10 years later, we'd be like, hey, you know what? I went for these under-18 trials, you know. Back then, no, right now, that's what we're hearing some of the guys are saying, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's going to be my next point. Don't be a person when, you know, you're older, you're drunk, and they say, last time I used to play for this <laughs> fellow, I uh, never make it. La. And you make all kinds of excuses. Uh, but it, it is still that. a story to be told. Yeah, At yeah. least you went for a like a professional trial. All right? <laughs> I mean, not everybody can be like that, getting that express round. All right? But still, you know, hard work, hard work perseverance yeah, paid yeah, off yeah. for him yeah. to get that express round. But yeah. Dale, we are going to wrap this up soon. But I've got like 10 rapid fire questions. You go to hit me with the best answer. Could be just one word, one answer. But this is rapid. That means you need to be fast. You ready? Yeah. Let's go, bro. What's your favorite hangout place in Singapore? Oh. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Home is where we all be. <laughs> always be all right. Your favorite place or city that you've always wanted to travel to? Oh, wow. Um. Or you've been there, but is no, it your favorite? I think where I want to go, I wouldn't single out anything but Europe. Europe, wow. Yeah, just, okay. Just Europe too, it's yeah. brilliant. The last gift you gave someone? Oh, my dad. Um, for his birthday. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. What okay. was it? What was it? Uh, pair of shoes. Oh, yeah, nice. My mom, my mom was nagging a bit. <laughs> for him to change his shoes. Yeah, <laughs> it happens in every household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. One thing you... Uh, need to have it on the fridge at all times. I think we know what's the answer yes. though. Coke. <laughs> We've answered for him. Uh, if you could meet with one female local celebrity, who would that be? Or any other celebrity. Single you, you ladies, know. I, just FYI. I I or how about uh, international? International. Female. Female. Oh, female. Female. Oh, come female. on. <laughs> come on. I really don't know. I know it's supposed to be rapid, but I really cannot think of anything now. You know. <laughs> Not even one? Yeah. Someone you have a crush on. Or Megan like, Fox or, or Britney know? Spears, Beyonce. I don't know. I'm na- I'm rhyming out names right now. I don't know, man. I really I cannot, I cannot think of anything. <laughs> but now. okay, if you guys out there want to go on a date with him, call him, all right? Dream Stadium to play in. We know already right answer. Yeah, I hear the silence, another, I, hear the I was thinking maybe National Stadium for what? No, 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 that's, yeah, uh, but I, yeah, I've yet to ever play in the National Stadium. So that's the biggest oh, really? one. Yeah, I don't play in the National Stadium. I've never ever okay. played. Soon I you will. on the field, but soon, never soon you will. Okay, right. okay. Uh, choose between this. Scoring a screamer or clearing the ball off the line? Clearing the ball off the line. It's a centre-back's yeah. answer. Huh? Uh, next. Take the man and the ball or just tackle just the ball itself. Whatever happens to him, don't care, just get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> alright, and lastly, alright, uh, when you retire, would you want to retire uh, if football has a manager or would you want to run your own business or you have your own plans? I've always had a uh, managerial role, not as a coach, but more towards management. Management, yeah, huh? it's, uh It's something that I took with my degree as well. Ah, so right. it's more towards management management side of things I don't think I will be a good coach yeah so you mean like those vice chairman chairman kind uh, you're trying to follow the steps of your vice chairman <laughs> then don't know it but yeah no it's just more towards management All right. side of hey, things that's a good dream to have it man I hope you get there one day I hope you get there wow what yeah, a brilliant yeah, time yeah, you yeah, had yeah. with uh it's been fun. Himself, it's yeah. been fun. I think the answers he gave for the defender one. Yeah, man. Is, is typical Punjabi defender. <laughs> Punjabi. <laughs> no, I think it's typical centre back answers. Centre back, yeah, yeah. Just wanna I also play the centre back. Swipe so. the player <laughs> and get the ball by hook or crook. So yeah, I mean that. I share the sentiments. <laughs> yeah, we share the same sentiments as well. We all live together. All centre backs. Definitely, man. It's been a huge honour to have you on board with us. I think yeah. you guys answered. From the time where you were playing football, your childhood, and you no, know, your preparations for the game, and uh, lastly, some yeah, on words. the preparations of your game, do you feel like a loner sometimes? Are you doing it alone? Oh, I want to ask you during that part. There, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, I think yeah. Before, I think with the stretches, I always just get into groove of things on my own. 
before I get into with the team. You know, in the changing room, it's different. Yeah, I can laugh, this and that. But when I'm out on the field, it's just getting myself um, fully focused at, for the task at hand. Mm. And yeah, just going to the game and giving your best shot. All right, yeah. going into the game, giving the best shot. Yeah. Del, big game this Friday. We stated at the start of the show. What are some things you want to tell the fans out there? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you know, on behalf of the team and everyone at the club, um, I would definitely like to apologize of the recent results. You know that what we've been having. Um, I think apology you know, accepted though. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, it's very important to you know acknowledge the fans who week in week out come down and support us. I mean, what's football without fans? You know, at yeah, the end yeah. of the day. So it's something that you know we we as a team are really working hard on. Um, I know we say give us time, but you know we are really, really doing our best to put on brilliant performance for your for you guys. Not only in terms of playing it, winning and stuff, but also displaying a very good uh play or rather a flow of football. You know mm. where it's very pleasing to spectators and stuff like that. Mm. So yeah, um, apart from that, thank you for always coming down to support us. You know, on the field, we can hear every, you know, all your cheers, all the support. And to be honest, you know, a lot of times when we were down, like against Tanjo Pagan and Tampanese, with your cheers, you know, really spurred us on. Yeah. You know, you guys were the true of men for us. So thank you for all of that. And please, please do continue supporting us. Don't give up on us. We are going to repay you. All right, time. fantastic, fantastic <coughs> words from Brilliant words. Delvin. Beautiful words to sign it up. Yep. All right, so this is me, Ras, signing off. It's the camera. <laughs> me, Ras, signing off. <laughs> Joel, see you guys on Friday. Be there or be squared because it will be the game of the season. Yeah. All right. One way or another, catch it is on YouTube. I'm sure it will be on TV. Yeah. Or just go down to the stadium. Just yeah. come down to Jalan Basar and support the Tigers. Yeah. Getting and the, three the, points. the next home game, <laughs> the next home game, you'll yep. see us. So Definitely. Come down hello. and say hi we to will, us. You don't say hello to us, we'll come over to say hello to you. Yeah, but if you come down to say hello to us, you walk away with something. You might, I'll tell you, yeah, right? Yeah, you the might. Keywords, you might, might walk away with something. So, come on down and say hi to us. And along the way, when you no know, Dell is walking out of the tunnel, give him a high five, yeah. pat on the back and say all yeah. the best. And... Uh, Tell him not to have ever coke again, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. That's a wrap. Thank That's you so wrap. much for watching. Ciao. Peace out. Peace out. Love. You want to end it with the tagline also? Uh... Where does the wheel? Oh. If... <laughs> <laughs> and I will end it with the tagline for this week because we are jumping onto the bandwagon. So, if there's a wheel, there is a way. Yes. Cheers, guys. Cheers.